Hey, welcome back. We're gonna, for those of you that thought we were done already, <laughs> there's still more. We still have more ahead. This is, but this we're gonna wrap it up with this. So at least we're heading down the pike. <clears throat> now, in this presentation, it's to stop the abuse and take back your power. So it's a lot of this, um, a lot of this drama and trauma that comes associated with family betrayal is very much like abuse. It might not, you know, trigger that inside your mind as you first think about it because it's, you know, how, how hard could it be? But you really kind of have to do, respond to it in the same way. And so families, they come in all different shapes and sizes and, and most families, most of them don't actually have this betrayal component, you know, so it's only about 46% of the families that have betrayal. Most of them, though, you know, not so much. So that's good. But in this room, and for those of those who are uh, watching online, uh, it's a different deal. You're going to run into family members that got a little more going on behind the scenes. So, uh, so you, ha it's, you have to pay attention. You have to be alert. Um, it's not just about... Like it's one thing when you're betrayed by someone that you know or someone that you work with, but when you are betrayed by someone that you share blood or relationship with, I mean, this is a person that you should be able to trust more than anything. Yet here they are stabbing you in the back. That hurts you in a, in a way that's far vastly more significant than any other kind of betrayal you could have because this is someone that you love. This is someone that you shared a life with. And there's life after. We're going to get there. So this is my book, uh, Trust Betrayal. So I kind of know what I'm talking about. been working in the relationship business for years, have thousands of hours dealing with betrayal all different kinds of betrayal, family betrayal, the most significant. And I am David M. Masters, lead coach, trainer, transfiguration specialist at St. Paul's Free University, and uh, where we're trying to make the world a better place. And so we really do appreciate all you being here. And uh, we're going to do what we can to try to help you get through this process of being betrayed by someone in your family. And... Uh, we're also looking for instructors. So if you feel that call on your heart to uh, help other people dealing with family betrayal, then seek us out. Anyone here, or you can check us out online. This is my family. This is why I do what I do. Uh, I got quite a crew. <laughs> Love these guys. We play a lot. We like to do things. And even within this, Family unit, uh, just to be, you know, totally transparent. Uh, there are, I, you know, I have kids and even a couple grandchildren who think that I might have betrayed them. Now, this would be never anything that I would do on purpose. But sometimes you can unintentionally kind of go against the grain because you're looking out for someone's best interest. I can think of, like, my son, back when I used to, okay, back when I used to be a preacher. <laughs> we had an after-church function, and uh, my son at home had this thing uh, that he would do when he was small. He would reach up to the tabletop, reach up to the tabletop, and find a drink and have a treat. It wasn't his drink, but to him it was a great treat for him, right? This was a problem for the after church event that we had because there were things on the table like hot coffee. So I told him, I caught him, you know, grabbing for a coffee cup, but I was like, you can't do that. Don't do that here. And so he took that. He was, he was hurt. He thought that was, that I had betrayed him. And um, then when he and Three church ladies were screaming and crying in the sink under the cold water. Later, you know, it worked out. 
that he had to learn that lesson the hard way. But I hadn't betrayed him. And sometimes we do that. We're kind of looking out for someone's best interest, and we tell them something that they don't want to hear, and it breaks their heart because they have something else totally in mind. So families are diverse. They're made up from all different kinds. It's not, like I said before, it's not just blood. Sometimes we're married into. And, and you can also develop family relationships with people that you're not in a legal relationship with. Boyfriend, girlfriend, co-workers, friends. You can still have that family relationship with them. And it hurts just as much when you're betrayed by someone that you uh, have had that relationship with. And family betrayal has been going on for a long time. Our first family, <laughs> this is Cain and Abel, if you guys know the story anyway. First family, you know, one brother kills the other. I mean, it's, it is a part of who we are. This, this is, happens. It's been happening since the beginning, and it will continue to happen. So the world goes round, and... There's another mechanism that's kind of, as the world is revolving and as we're evolving, there's a mechanism in our society that actually profits from family dysfunction. So that's, that's a, a mechanism that in our culture has made it even more pervasive that there's going to be betrayal happening in your family because people can profit from it. It's not like back in the day. Back in the day when we lived on the farm, you could not screw it up. If you're like, oh, well, betray a family member and walk away, you could die of starvation. But now we want to build these. Uh, I would like to see us build the family unit back again if, we have, uh, if we've gone too far and we can't do that. That is what it is. But we can take responsibility for ourselves and take it from there. And we're not going to have families that we drop off at the dump or throw in the garbage. I mean, this is our society has become disposable in so many ways. Everything goes in the trash. But not my family. I don't know about you. Another weird thing that kind of happens is if you're in an... A familial, abusive relationship, the, there's still this huge tie that exists between you and the family member. And you, it feels bad. If you think about moving on to a safe place, there's something that feels wrong about that because of this connection. Very deep. Very strong. Like, you see that a lot in uh, child abuse cases. A caseworker will will go out to try to save a child's life, to pick it up from an abusive family, put it in a safe environment. The kid's got bruises, broken bones. I mean, this is bad. And that child will cling to the abusive parent, fight, scream, and just go into a fit to try to stay with that person because of this tie. So it wouldn't surprise me if you in this room and you online would have that kind of a tie that if you're thinking about getting a little peace, getting some separation from you and someone who's not treating you right, you know, there is an instinctual part of you that's going to fight against that. It doesn't seem right, but it's totally right. What you need to do is you need to think about yourself, get yourself to a safe place, because you have to think about safety first. So... The abuse, even though it might not be physical abuse, it might not be violent, but abuse is abuse. And it has to stop. And the only way you can do that is get yourself to a safe place. So you have to ask yourself, if you're going to do this, you're going to take a, make the decision to take the action to get some separation between you and this person, you have to ask yourself, is this family member toxic to me. I mean, you wouldn't do that to any member of your family, right? Intentionally. Unintentionally. I keep 
expecting it. Ah, oh, man, I really hurt my son's feelings with that coffee bed. But sometimes you just have to say, enough is enough. And you have to take action. So you have to find a sta safe place, put that distance between you and that other person. Not happening. Can everybody do this move? It's like a kung fu move. Yeah, don't do that. Everybody, you can do that. Good job. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Mm, not happening. Okay, so we're not going there. And let me tell you why. If this abuse keeps happening to you, what happens is your immune system drops. You're going to get sick. You're going to get a disease. Could develop cancer, and if you let and let go long enough, it will kill you. That's what happens. I mean, this is serious stuff. You talk about family betrayal; nothing cuts deeper. So, very serious stuff. So, if you can't find physical space, there's this fella called Victor Frankel. He wrote a book called "Man's Search for." meaning so uh he what he did he was like he was in a concentration camp and they did medical experiments on his body while he was alive you know and conscious and so he was like i am not going to let these people get to me to who i am so what he did was he created a safe space for him to go inside of his mind and he would hang out there while they were doing all these atrocities to him. And, and then he came out and he's, you know, in pretty good shape, you know, considering what he'd been through. And he lived through that and wrote that book. And um, if you have enough nerve or courage, you think about taking a look at that book, Man's Search for Meaning. So... There you are, left to your own devices. And you might like to know that uh, we figured out who the family member is going to be that's most likely to stab you in the back. Surprisingly, moms are at the top of the list. And I think, oh my god, if you can't trust your mom, who can you trust, really? <laughs> I mean, that's the only person I'm absolutely certain I'm related to. <laughs> So mom's at the top of the list, followed by your spouse. And men are three times more likely to betray than women in the spousal relationship. And then the mother and father will team up and betray. And then number four is the children will betray the parents. And again, three times more likely to be male. Your sibling is going to stab you in the back. I mean, somebody that you shared the same roof with and, and uh, probably had a lot of fun and probably have had a lot of pain as well. So your sibling is uh, number five, and uh, the girls are more likely to stab you in the back than the boys. And then your in-laws, you, I, I kind of thought that would be at the top of the list. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not. And then the other extended family members after that. So we've identified them. So now what can we do? We talked about this cord. So with your permission, if you'd like to join me, I'd like to help you cut that cord right now in this room and online. You can join us as well. And we'll cut those cords between you and this person that is uh, dragging you through the mud. You want to join me? <coughs> okay. Really simple little process. <laughs> Not okay. Okay, so you're going to need a little bit of room, and if you have like notes on your lap or whatever, uh, clean those off. You're going to need some lap, you need some space in the lap. And I'll just kind of show you first how this is going to work, okay? 
So I want you to imagine that person that you're having this uh, betrayal with in your in your mind's eye, and uh, and this is the process. I'm not going there yet, but when we do get there, it's going to be uh, we're going to slap our lap th- twice and clap. Slap our lap twice and clap. Slap our twice, and then on the third time, we're going to hold our hands together. And then we're gonna we're gonna do this action and say cut, and at that point that will cut the tie when we get there. Okay. So before we want to get you kind of mellowed out, relaxed, and centered. Ah. So close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. Hold it and let it out. This time when we take a deep breath in, we're going to do that and imagine the breath going into the area of your heart. Deep breath in. Hold it. And let it out. (sighs) Nice and centered, feeling good in your chair. Okay, you can open your eyes. And now you can do it with me. Ready? We're going to do slap, slap, clap. Slap, slap, clap. Slap, slap. Hold it. Ready? On the count of three. One, two, three, cut. And that was that easy. And it's done. Now, if you ever need to do that again, like because this family member is going to keep trying to connect to you because it's actually a source for them of power. All of this is about power. But you can take the power of love and trump. Oh, we should probably use that word. Uh, <laughs> you could probably use that, uh, use the power of love to take the power away from the person who's trying to manipulate you or betray you uh, because that has more power. That's the most powerful tool and weapon in the universe, and you are welcome to use that at any time. So if they are trying to reconnect with you, all you have to do is rub your hands do this. They don't even have to know what you're doing. Yeah. Rub your hands like that. Walk away if you have to. Get that space. Okay, so now that we've done that, I want you to do like one more thing and put your hand on your heart. And with that person in mind, I want you to say, I love you, but you gotta go. I have to look after me. Okay, and now you are free. Good job, guys. But that's only the beginning. There's a lot of drama, trauma that comes along with this kind of a relationship. We're not finished yet. I have this little procedure I call tap cross therapy. There's going to be residual emotional crap. Can I say crap? (laughs) Okay, thanks. Uh, That comes with this. Uh, You feel bad. You think about this person, and it's going to make you feel bad. So uh, we're going to do this little process here. And it's not going to feel bad anymore. So it involves some tapping. So I'll just like explain to you how we're going to do this. Okay, there are meridians in the face and on the body that we're going to use for this method. And so we're going to tap just above the eyebrow line on your forehead here. We're going to tap there. We'll be tapping on the chin. And we'll be tapping on the outside of the eye, that bone right there, and this outside of the eye on that bone over there. And then that takes care of the head. And then we're gonna go do the body. We're gonna start again between the eyebrows and the forehead. Then we're gonna do the solar plexus or the belly. And then we're gonna do the shoulder. We're gonna tap there. And we're gonna do the other shoulder, okay? 
and we are going to do we're going to say these are the words that we're going to say we'll say them with me um uh, how about this some of you can't see the screen um i'll say it and you can follow repeat after me okay that better okay so let's let's go ahead we're already pretty well centered we're gonna start on the forehead and we're gonna say i love you i trusted you you betrayed me you hurt me but this stops here and now you can't control my life Sorry, I'm doing this for real, too. <laughs> I'm taking my power back. You can't hurt me anymore. I am free. Okay, the chin. I love you. I trusted you. You betrayed me. You hurt me. But this stops. Here and now. You can't control my life. I'm taking my power back. You can't hurt me anymore. I am free. I love you. I trusted you. You betrayed me. You hurt me. But this stops. Here and now. You can't control my life. I'm taking my power back. You can't hurt me anymore. I am free. Other one. I love you. I trusted you. You betrayed me. You hurt me. But this stops. Here and now. You can't control my life. I'm taking my power back. You can't hurt me anymore. I am free. Okay, forehead. I love you. I trusted you. You betrayed me. You hurt me. But this stops. Here and now. You can't control my life. I'm taking my power back. You can't hurt me anymore. I am free. Solar plexus, belly area. I love you. I trusted you. You betrayed me. You hurt me. But this stops. Here and now. You can't control my life. I'm taking my power back. You can't hurt me anymore. I am free. Shoulder. I love you. I trusted you. You betrayed me. You hurt me. But this stops. Here and now. You can't control my life. I'm taking my power back. You can't hurt me anymore. I am free. I love you. I trusted you. You betrayed me. You hurt me. But this stops, here and now. You can't control my life. I'm taking my power back. I am free. You put your hands together like this and bow. Say, I love you. And you're free, indeed. Thank you for joining me in that.
Oh, sure. I wasn't expected to lose it there. <laughs> it's okay, Masters, hang on. We're all in the process, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, wasn't expecting that. <laughs> it happens. Forehead, the chin. Yeah, forehead, then the chin. Then the outside of the eye. And then the forehead again. And then the solar plexus. And then shoulder and shoulder. Now, if we... If uh, I would have had the wherewithal to think ahead and have you um, measure that, it would have been, you know, the angst that you felt about that individual would have been at a 10 because of the betrayal. And now, if you were to ask yourself what that number is, it's like a lot less. So if it's not already gone, and you can do that process again, and you can get that right down to a zero. And the beauty of that is that we're taking our power back. And uh, they don't have power over you anymore. That puts you in the driver's seat. So now, when you're in the driver's seat, then you can take some control of your life and start doing things rationally. Because it's hard to rationalize when you're not you know, in full <coughs> control of your emotions. You've got someone else who has power over your emotions. They keep trying to assert their power over you, and that keeps you distracted from doing the right stuff. So let's review some things that we could do. Make sure that you don't retaliate, <clears throat> because if you do, that just makes you sink to their level, and it's an indication to them that they won. It's all a power trip, right? Don't let them do it, because if they can get you to react, they win. It proves that they have control. So don't give them the satisfaction and instead bless them. And I'm going to review Amy's thing and I'm going to apply it to these individuals right now with a little hapono, hapono. So we're going to, we've done this before, but now we're doing it again. And so I, I want you to be able to keep this as a tool that you can have in your tool belt. So with your hand over your heart, Thinking about this person in particular, <sighs> say with me, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. Let's just do it one more time for fun, because this is a great tool. You can use this for anything. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. And when you're dealing with toxic people, it's like, this is like the first tool I'm going to pull out of my tool belt when I'm talking to somebody. Most of the time, if I've said I'm sorry, that gets their attention. Now, my intention is to go through this whole thing, but just I'm sorry changes the whole dynamic of what's happening in that relationship at that time. It breaks the continuity. In my mind, my intention is to go through this whole thing. I might have said it, but I've already said it with my heart. My intention was to already say this. I might not get it out, and the whole thing changes. The whole world changes when you use this. So I'm sorry. And sometimes I get to please forgive me. 
and then you know it, it changes unless you're dealing with a psychopath <laughs> and there are sociopaths psychopaths narcissists that this will not work on <laughs> you know but but uh, but you keep going forward so some keys are don't do not respond just let it be you have all of your emotional faculties now but just with these three tools right now that we've done today you're in charge you know they don't have the power over you anymore you've taken your power back so that with that in mind you can just let it be it doesn't have to affect you anymore they can go off and say weird stuff and you can just change the subject or you know you can always just walk away but do no defense no guilt no accusation no shame no defense this is the first place we want to go is to defend ourselves forget it it's useless don't even worry about that don't waste the effort do not defend yourself don't even enter into that dialogue with them and don't make them guilty don't accuse them don't shame them only love them that's it love that's the card you want to play and if it gets too wild you just walk away that's it so what if they want to recon reconcile okay so you love them but you don't have to trust them right trust is something that's where this all started you did trust them and what happened you got burned big time so now you can you can trust them if they give you something to trust right and that's going to take time little pieces at a time they can rebuild the trust relationship if not you can still be cordial but don't trust them so you can forgive them but you're no fool you learn from their tra past transgressions you kind of get an idea what's gonna what's coming next but you don't judge them about it because they're doing whatever they need to do to get through their life and you want the same respect from them you want them to give you enough space to do what's important to you so it's mutual respect because you are loving and you're cautiously aware So for more information, St. Paul's Free University .com, where we're trying to make the world a better place, and hopefully we've given you some tools here today. I want to thank all the people that have helped me uh, today and, and all of you that have helped us out. Wendy, Amy, Daniel, you guys were great. And, uh, and God bless you guys and you guys. And... Uh, if you want, you can find out more about me at davidmmasters.com. And that's all we have for you today. So live long and prosper. Thank you. Have a good night.